Welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success story series of, of interviews where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and challenges and what drives them forwards. And today I'm really delighted we have with us Keenan Foley of Arillo based in York and London. So firstly, Keenan, thanks for joining us and perhaps you could introduce yourself and Arillo and what you do and how you help your clients. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, like you said, I'm, I'm Keenan, uh, Creative Director at Arillo. Uh, we predominantly make uh, commercials, so we make adverts for businesses um, pretty much around the world, um, mainly focusing in the social sphere. So um, uh, all, all the adverts that you see online, we, we've still got a small hand to play in, play in that. Um, but <clears throat> um, as all budding filmmakers, I think our, our, our true goal is to tell really long form narrative stories so we've we made a bit of a pivot uh five years ago in 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 doing long form documentaries and we've had uh, a few little successes in 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 that so yeah it's been been good i was looking at some of your films i, I see you work with uh, quite a few of the sailing teams and uh, I, I must admit i've got quite quite hooked on that the sort of coverage i mean the, these new sort of foil based racing is just incredible yeah, sa sa sailing seems to be one of those sectors that we've, we've fallen into quite nicely. Um, even though I've actually never sailed myself, uh, <laughs> um, I, I think that gives us the edge. Actually, I think that that sort of gives us the angle. Uh, but yes, yeah, sa sailing sailing has been a really interesting journey, and, and it's, it's one that's sort of taken us around the world, um, and, and and being able to see all these amazing boats do amazing things. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm always just so surprised where the stories actually are. You know, like the, the human side of sailing still, I, I don't think, and I've been doing it for sort of seven years, hasn't really come out um, yeah. in it. And we're actually working on a bit of a documentary piece for the British sailing team at the moment, trying to bring out that human emotion to sailing. Because I think there's a lot of myths in sailing that it's either the super yachts and the the big the big stuff or it's it's for the for the yachties and and, and yes. the and rahs of the world but actually joe you dig down deep and there's some absolutely incredible stories there that i just can't wait to uncover really wonderful uh, well i look forward to, uh, to 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 keep you posted on those so um would it be okay if you sort of tell me a little bit about your background how, how you got into business and why this particular business yeah um so I've, I've always had a bit of a passion for for making things um mainly in the in the film world um Joe it started off really young like filming my friends mountain biking uh with my dad's camcorder um and then I sort of drifted into into the theatery side of things and I was I was sort of hell-bent on doing um drama lighting so lighting for theatres um and I was and I sort of had this goal that I was like right I'm, I'm, I'm going to the best in 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 the UK and that's that's where I want to go when I go to university. And I sort of had my, my hopes pinned on going to Lipper, which is that Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts. Uh, and when I didn't get in there, I was a bit like, oh, like, do I, do I pursue this thing in theatre or do I, do I drift into, into film? And so um, this was back in 2007. I decided to study film at, at York St. John University. And I met, met three, three amazing people there that I think shared, shared my vision in, in the way that, I wanted to make films and, and they wanted to make films. So in sort of 2010, when it came to graduation, we, we joined forces um, and created Arillo. And I think when we created it, I don't think any of us really, like, <laughs> like either of us thought that it was going to go anywhere. It was one of those sort of like university project dreams that you're like, oh yeah, we'd love to own a, own a business one day. Um, and yeah, we, we just sort of, put our foot on the gas and, and we really went for it and we, we were super lucky in the early days um i don't i don't know if you, everyone knows but there's a clothing brand called jack wills um and we really latched on to them early and as a business they adopted social media super early on and yep. they saw value in us making films for their social media and when other brands just weren't really looking at that jack yeah. was, was and, and, and we were this sort of new in, innovative business that was approaching film in a completely different way um which i think gave us that edge really early on which was quite nice wow. well that's that, 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 that's that is quite a story I, I, that you're only one of i think only about nine people i met, met, met obviously lots of people in the business There's, you're probably only one of nine that i know that have gone straight into business from education 
Um, it, it's quite a big, you know, and it is quite a significant step. Most people go and work for somebody else for, for lots of different reasons, but so that's quite amazing. And then, as you say, so early to to put to to land such a significant brand. Um, so, yeah. Well, absolutely wonderful. So I, I guess on the way, um, obviously that's a pretty great start. But what are some of the biggest challenges you've had to overcome as you've you've, you've grown? Yeah, well, I think you you touched on it a bit there. Like <clears throat> none of us directors have had any formal full time employment. So with that comes this um, sense of we don't know how other people do it. Um, I'm. And we're constantly learning and evolving ourselves. You know, like I still sort of sometimes look at myself as a as a, a film student graduate rather than running a business for sort of 10, 11 years. Um, and so we've had to do a lot of self-training and self-looking ourselves to be like, actually, how do we evolve and grow ourselves? Um, and we were super fortunate early on that one of our other, I, I suppose actually, the, yeah, the biggest one was shifting our mindset from, um film production being our hobby our passion our thing that we studied and how we made that into an actual commercial business um and what i was going to say is that we were really lucky early on that rich one of the, the other directors he did like a business course um that was provided by the university and it just made us look it was like joe if we wanted to make um a decent salary we had to make x amount of films a year if we were only going to charge like 500 quid and i remember like it was like scratching our heads being like oh my god we've got to make a lot of films if we want to be like <laughs> earning a salary out of this um and i think it's th those sort of that that sort of like applying our hobby to to business has been has been the biggest thing that i think is a, like attributed to our growth and we were really lucky as well like we did a i, I, I personally did a, a business course um it was like it's called Ten Thousand small businesses by goldman sachs goldman sachs yeah brilliant um and for me that was a complete eye-opener um in terms of i could feed off other business owners like it was uh, i made really good friends with joe a guy that uh, owned warehouses um in south yorkshire and yet the businesses seemed to align in in the problems yeah. and, the, and the things that we had when it came to film production um in sailing or around the world or whatever it was um so yeah there's that's that's been our sort of like biggest growth challenge is, is understanding the business world and how we apply such a creative and fluid hobbyist world to that it's yeah no i i, I can totally get understand that I, I think there is a the flip of that is is having not had you know employment with somebody else to look at other businesses you don't know what's impossible and i think that's great quite often great re, re, you know great entrepreneurs happen with them. well i didn't think it was why wouldn't i do it this way why wouldn't i decide this would be the case and and it helps i think you know we, we our, our limiting beliefs are, are you know can really hold us back sometimes and um not not having them because we've not had those experiences is is probably quite as valuable as the experience of then learning about about business and how to how to create so so well, fascinating. I, I guess I, I'm going to ask you about what you've learned, what the biggest learnings you've had in, you know, so far in, in, in growing a business. And it'd be quite interesting to learn, especially from given that background. Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest learnings for, for us has, has been seize the opportunity when you see it. And sometimes it, it is plain to see and sometimes it is, it's not plain to see. Um, I, I, I sort of in hindsight and reflection, look back on how we managed to grow Arillo. And I sort of feel that in 2010, we were going through this huge um, technology revolution. Joe, things were becoming digitized. Storage was becoming easier. Uh, and Joe, we started making films the way that we felt was best suited to that technology. Yep. And Joe, like when other people were like, oh no, you should do it this way, you should do it that way. Joe, we were sort of hell bent on, this is the way we should do it. It might not be the professional way or the industry standard, but that, that's how we're gonna do it. And Joe, like 10 years down the line, that is now industry standard, how people mm -hmm. make and do films. And I, I sort of think we're going through that sort of same technology revolution that we went through 10 years ago. Uh, we're going through a bit of a platform revolution now that Joe, anyone has their voice and it can be heard on Joe podcasts, TikTok, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Joe, all these sort of things. I think 
understanding and latching hold of, of that will be the, the key to, 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 I think, success in going forward is definitely in, in the film industry, uh, for sure. Um, and another big learning, I think, is just surround yourself with the, the right people. Do you know, like, I'm by no means the best filmmaker out there. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've been really fortunate enough to find the right people and bring them on super early on, whether... Um, that'd be like, well, I'm not the, the best cameraman. So we bring on a cameraman. I'm not the best editor. We bring on an editor. Um, so we don't know anything about VFX. So let's learn about VFX. Do you know, like it very much was that let's bring people along for the ride. And mm. it, it was really quite sort of like um, humbling at the start to see so many friends and people around you want to get involved in, in the business really early on. I think a lot of people can see the excitement of yes. starting anything and a, a new thing. And I think, it's always I, like my, my thing is let people in and, and see what they can do to, to, to elevate what you're trying to do because nine times out of 10, they'll take it in a really interesting direction and, and they'll latch on a hundred percent. It's brilliant. No, I, I bang on. I think, you know, a brightness of future, a, a vision, a strong vision and set of values will attract all of the right people to you and, and be, but, but also for what you said, be open to, adding their skills and their knowledge and their capabilities to yours is, is how you get winning teams. And I, you know, your first point, I think reminds me of, I think Richard Branson says something like when, you know, whenever you're asked to do something, always say yes. And then, and then work out how to do it. You know, it's, it's, and, and, and that's how we get innovation, isn't it? It's just say, yeah, okay, well, yeah, we can do that. Um, and then we'll crack on. Brilliant. So what, who, who or what would be some of your biggest influences in, in, in business, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've biggest influences. Um, I definitely, I definitely take a lot from my parents. Um, they they ran, they ran just like a little guest house in the in the Yorkshire Dales. You know, like nothing on on a big scale. You know, it was just them two. But I think I've I've always been around people that have ran their own businesses, big or small. Um, and sort of just seeing the workload and, and what they've got to do and, and how they've got to do it. I think work ethic um, is, is, is a big part of it. And I think in that same Richard Branson book that I think you were talking about, he sort of says like half of it is just showing up. And I, I sometimes I sometimes think that that is that that is it. It doesn't matter if it's a networking event, whether it's a job that you don't know how to do, whether it's um, Joe like a meeting that might not go anywhere, or Joe an event you want to go to. I think just showing up and chatting to people often leads to to, to something incredible. But I mean, I, I, I do still read all the, the business books. I still you know, listen to podcasts pretty much every night to try and like, just keep, keep my brain ticking over and learning and, and yeah. figuring out because actually I think business acumen comes from a lot of other things as well. I think mo most of it's common sense, but to learn common sense, you've, you've got to sort of take in the world and, and, and take in everything around you. Um, so yeah, I listen to a lot, a lot of business books and a lot of podcasts, um, and just watch watch what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people don't watch it, and I, I mentioned that Goldman Sachs and um, what what Rich did, but a lot of it's just observing what other businesses are doing and and asking the questions and not being afraid. You know, I've got a really good friend who runs a sandwich shop in in York, and I love to like speak to him about business and how he's doing things. And Joe, I see a lot of similarities in the way you run a sandwich shop to a way you run a film business. And then I sort of like turn over and I'll speak to the, the guy that's running the hairdressers in York and I'll chat to him about business and what he's finding wrong. Or Joe, the guy that we're, we're leasing cars, cars through, like Joe, I'll sit down and have a good half an hour chat or go and have dinner with him. Joe, I, I'm just really friendly and open and want to hear what everyone else's sort of war stories are. Um, and, and take them all in. Brilliant. I, I, you re, yeah, you, you remind me, we were um, oh, going back a long time, 17-odd 70 years or so, but one of the first group um, business coaching courses we ran where we got different businesses together and it, it, it was more of a, a, a training course. And I remember we had two businesses there that were, one was a, a precision engineering company, so they were very high precision in turning, turning metal. Um, and, and the other one was a holistic veterinary practice and, you know, two totally disparate businesses, but the sharing of ideas and, oh, how, how could I, to, how could I use that in my business? And that sparking was so 
incredibly valuable compared to probably if they're exactly the same business, it would be, well, we all do the same thing. So I, I totally get it. And I, I, you know, I'm very similar. I just love talking to business people about these sorts of things. What, you know, what are you doing? What's make, what's working for you? What, why do you think that happened? And um, yeah, all the information is out there. We've just got to be open to it and, and attract it, I think. Yeah, definitely. You've got to, you've got to lean into the communities that are available. Do you know, we decided really early on that we wanted to be based in York, for example, and you know, we lent into the community and went out and we did things that forced us to meet people in the community and become established within within York and without that sort of strong foothold of of network and people. I don't think it really would have been anything it could have been. And you know, like I remember having really early on meetings being like is York the best place for a film production company? Do you know, like, Joe, we can't, Joe, can we actually make the films you want to do there? And Joe, uh, we sort of said, yes, we can, because we've got a really strong community, a really strong group of people that can do it, Joe, but we are going to have to have some presence in London. And yeah. we then made a decision that we want to be part of the London film community. And Joe, Joe, it, it's super basic stuff, like just messaging people that were making work that we wanted to make in London, being like, Hey, do you want to go for a coffee? So like you're making amazing content that we want to make. And, and we'd go down and meet them. Joe, and then they become friends. And Joe, I, I sort of thought that the film world would be this like super competitive, like, oh, we're gonna make this advert. Joe, like, you stay away from us. Joe, like, but actually, it's this really sort of like quite harmonious, like, oh, we can't do this project. Can you help us out on this project? Oh, can we borrow this bit of kit? Joe, well, actually, we've got too little, Joe, little work at the moment. Have you got anything that you could help us with? And actually, it's just this really Really sort of nice sphere of, of, of businesses if you if you're willing to lean in and open yourself up to the community i think yep i i find the most successful people are both open to, to learn and, and and you know lifelong learners but also really open to sharing and, and helping others and yeah. it, i completely agree that sort of scarcity mentality of keeping it to yourself tends to to to, to limit growth um so having that mindset is so valuable yeah in, in, in all your sort of bits i'm so glad you're you're, you're a sponge for, for for learning and stuff what 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 might be i, I love to pick up favorite sayings and quotes that that have helped you along the way is there anything that stands out as, as a as a quote that you 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 return to on a regular basis <laughs> uh, uh, weirdly i don't know if you've ever seen like touching the void um it's like a film about uh uh-huh some abseilers and there's a quote at the start and i mean i, I always i always miss do it but it was like all men all men dream but not equally those who dream by the uh those who dream by the night in the dusty recesses of the mind wake in the day to find it was vanity but dreamers of the day are dangerous men for they may act their dreams of open arms to make it possible and i just don't know why i remembered it like Joe, like it's it's brilliant <laughs> It's just like one of those quotes. I was just like, it's so true. You're like, I feel like you can lie in bed, like, and you have all these amazing ideas that like come to life. And I think it's because you give yourself space to like think when you're, when you're sleeping or like go, go and sleep. And like, I've always tried to be like, right, how can I be a daydreamer in some sense, like shape or form? And you know, they've taken on so many different, like Joe, I think Arillo now is 100% a film business, but you know, like when we were starting out, we were like, oh, maybe we're going to be an outdoor outdoor cinemas business because we love to watch film as well as make films. So we started like hosting outdoor cinemas in, in York and we managed to get like 500 people coming to each one. Um, and we were like, oh, that, that could actually be a business in its its own right. And you know, like we started making a bit of money in the on the bars and um, we were like, oh, maybe we'll start our own vodka brand and we'll be the, the drink of choice at rap parties, uh, film festivals, and we'll give all the proceeds back to, to, to the film industry. Um, but we ended up not doing well we did those ideas and we did them for a couple of years and then we decided that actually we always just loved film so we'd always go back to it but i think if you don't give you space to like explore those ideas in the cold light of day do you know like ultimately then they're never going to flourish in, into anything um so yeah that, that's that's a really good quote and i do always quote that like just just show up Joe, just if yep. you get invited, if you just get if you get invited to something, just show up. Sure. You know, like, and I think that that can start at a really organic level. You know, like when you're at school and you're like, oh, should I go to this party or do I, like, should I like go and join my friends at this? Joe, and 
the, the hesitation can start really early on Joe whereas I was quite a proactive person I just threw myself into it even if I was the only one going to a party on my own Joe I would stand on my own for like 30 minutes and then eventually you would make friends and you'd have a really good night Joe yeah. right up until like when you get invited to uh, a conference or just like a, a celebration of someone's uh 10th for business anniversary or something Joe, i've always sort of had the mentality if i get invited i should just go and, it, and it is, it's incredible where that actually takes you and what journey journeys you can go on absolutely no i completely agree it's it's as you say it's the taking part that's turning up and mm. you know most 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 of us regret what we didn't do rather than what we did do if that yeah. makes sense it's uh, so I, I, I totally get that yeah they're touching the point i mean it's great that you've got that it's quite a long quote but it's obviously clearly <laughs> in, in, embedded and I, I mean I, th I think the biggest learning from that I re i've read the read the book and and, the, the, and you know the other thing was having to choose to go down into the crevasse um because it was impossible to go up which is totally counterintuitive to anything is perhaps another lesson in business is sometimes you go um i, I think uh, warren buffett the, the famous investor talked about be um was it be bold when people are fearful and be fearful when people are bold and yeah. it, that whole counterintuitive thing is is often where innovation and disruption and various other things come from. So that's uh, that's fascinating. That's a great, a great <laughs> book. Amazing, amazing story. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I suppose actually there as well. Like you, and you've also got this like split of community. Like when, like we're touching the void. You know, this whole climbing community looking at it, being like, "Oh, that was right. That was wrong. Joe, you should have done it this way. You should have done it that way." And I think that's quite reflective of business as well. Like Joe, once you start going down the path, you get a lot of people being like, "No, do it this way. Do it that way." Joe, oh, this other company is doing this. Way. Like, actually, it doesn't matter because ultimately we're both going to be saved. Joe, like, we're both going to be in, at the end goal back at base camp. Yeah, like, and we're, we're all going to sit around a fire and talk about the war stories of, of how we got there. Yes, absolutely, blimey! So, um, in all this, you know, everything you've you've done so far, what what what, what have you learned about yourself as you've grown? Ooh, what have I learned about myself? Um, I think it's that positivity can be quite infectious. I think, um, I think as a sort of business leader or someone that's sort of leading a group of people ultimately your excitement can spark the rest of excitement along along the chain and Joe, i'm very aware that i'm not the person that can make a film by myself and Joe, like usually i've got to start the project off in a right way whether that's the way that i win the work the weather the way that i communicate about the work that we're going to be doing um I think if you start positive and I start positive and I start the communication message off right, usually that will echo down the down the chain um, and, and people will get get excited about it. I think as humans, you have a lot of responsibility for other people's um, views and, and takes on, on things. Yeah. And, and definitely as someone that's that has people within a team, you definitely feel that the most that you need to you need to make that right for them um yeah 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 probably probably that um what else have i learned about myself i don't know it's really interesting isn't it because i i also haven't had like a pivot you know, like a lot of people i feel like a lot of like even like business books or anything they all like might work for someone else and then they they, they pivot and and go into something else and they always like look back on a certain moment of their life as being the point of which things had to change joe like and there's, and there's a yep. learning in there joe whereas i've sort of progressively just sort of been snowballing my own like little world <laughs> for the last 11 years so joe, i i don't think i've had any like crazy pivot point um and I probably just learned to 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 make sure you don't make enemies. I think definitely in business, you know, like if people leave the business, you know, like if people decide to leave on good terms, on bad terms, you know, like I've always sort of been like, let's just take a moment to reflect, learn like why they would have left or what they would have done to to, to leave, uh, and and make that into into a positive situation. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That no, I, I completely agree, and, and that, that sort of negative emotion, negative feelings, just it doesn't serve anybody. That's the reality. If it, if it, if it doesn't serve us, we should let let it go. So I, I, I certainly agree with that. 
So I, I, I'm guessing you've got or you, you, you're planning further growth and further successes. And I, and I wonder what what challenges as you grow you might you might be facing. Yeah, I mean, growth is a hundred percent what we we want to do. For us, we've always had the goal that we want to make the best commercials and the best uh, feature documentaries or, or film. So, and to do all that in house. So. I don't know, like for, for us, the film world is very much a freelance based business. Yeah, you know, like you know, like people come on depending on the skill set or what the project requires. Yeah. So, and we made a bit of a, a sort of business decision that we wanted to bring all the key roles in house. Right. So we've been on that journey for for a long time, whether that's kit, crew, um, the offices. Joe, you know, we want we want to have everything that or the studio, everything in house. So we 100% want to focus on the making and, and and that being part of it, but also a bit like what I touched on with the outdoor cinemas, you know, Arillo has always been about enjoying film um, and, and how people enjoy it. So you know, our sort of long vision strategy is you know, how is Arillo involved in the enjoyment of, of film, you know, like whether that's cinema 2.0, whether that's you know, Netflix 2.0 or like the way that you're enjoying it. Joe, we want that to be quite a physical and, and real yeah. environment that, that people are coming to. Um, but how that actually looks seems to change year, year on year. Um, but in terms of challenges as well, I think COVID 100% has been a really big challenge for us. Um, and I don't think it was the, the first lockdown, but more the subsequent other lockdowns that happened afterwards sort of just caught us a little bit off guard and has, has, has got us on the back foot, really, um, in terms of, of how we perceive growth and, and action. You know, for, for us, and I imagine most people at the moment, it's almost just like, how do we survive rather yeah. than, than how do we grow? And that's been a real challenge for me as, as, as the business side of growth Joe, like it's been, it's been my role pretty much the whole time to be looking at how we grow and Joe, for the last two years i've been sort of looking at how we survive rather than than, than how we grow um yep. and, and and also scaling back you know like when yep. we need to be like actually you know, like the the we can't do office expansions we can't do kit investments we can't do um training and, and thing budgets this year because we just need to survive has been has, has been the has been the real challenge and it, i think it will take a few months and a few probably calls like this to to get you in a bit more of a mindset of how do we grow post yeah. all of this um yeah it's a real, real challenge out there yeah I, I think you know for, for different businesses in different industries i, I certainly um, I, I'm not we're not necessarily in a recession right now, but I've, I've personally been through a couple of recessions business wise and 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 in, in certainly both of them survival was a win, if that makes sense. It, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, significant competition went by the wayside. and We took no pleasure in that, but did take pleasure in the fact that we had survived and that, you know, that created its own growth because we had so much more opportunities to um to, to follow up after you know as we came out of those recessions so sometimes it's just celebrating that we are still here and that is a a major a major win yeah defo defo and definitely when you have like joe when sailing for example for example there's a lot of travel involved in sailing so it's a, it's a global it's a global sport um and joe almost overnight you lose 30 percent of of your thing and it's like well Joe, how are we gonna, how are we going to change that how are we going to pivot how are we going to survive like like you said um but equally that they are good challenges and Joe, like I've, I've spoken to, to a lot of amazing people along the way and i think it's about being super i think in, in business it's super easy to be um glass half full all the time and put put your positive foot forwards but actually i've, I've found the community has been super uh responsive when you sort of say look joe we are actually having a, a, a bad couple of months and actually people come to the rescue in, in these crazy ways that you could have never imagined yeah. whether that's referring you work or inviting you to this or picking you up here or you know like it's it's amazing what what what, what people can do when you actually just put a little bit of weakness out there and, and, and display your challenges for, for growth in a, in a very real way, I think. 
I agree. I, 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 you know, I think the most successful people, as we, as we said before, you know, they want to help each other. And, yeah. and it's that camaraderie of, you know, it's a tough gig founding and running a business. It is a tough gig. And that's why only sort of 4% of the population do it. And, and it's understanding that. And um, it creates its own camaraderie, I think, is, is that people go through challenges. You know, it's very rare that a business, you know, that a business and, and its leaders will, will have not gone through challenges as, uh, in any point. And so um, understanding that and wanting to help each other is is a big part of that, I think. And, and certainly, you know, us as an organisation, because we have the, the, the tools and the strategies to help people typically grow. But uh, as you rightly say, a lot of that we use just to help people survive over the last couple of years. And, and a, a lot of the work we do is mindset and just helping people with the mindset to say, let's get through it together, you know, and um, it's been great to have helped lots of people just just get through it. You know, and that was it. It wasn't necessarily the sensible thing to start planning to grow 20 times in the next three years or anything, but just get through it. And um, it's one of my, you know, one of the quotes I always pick up from Winston Churchill was uh, and it, uh, it was was as simple as if you, if you find yourself going through hell, just keep going. And um, <laughs> the alternative is a bit, bit silly, really. But no, that's great. So I, I've got a couple of sort of questions just to, to wind up which i'm really interested to get your answer to Bef but before that given you're a film man and i, I love my films what is your favorite film of all time and why god that is a good question and i mean if you asked uh, any of the other directors i think they would give you some like super filmic um <laughs> like answer my my only problem is that i absolutely love like um coming of age films or like stupid like rom com -y films or right. uh, <laughs> anything like that um i, I tell you what I, I've, I don't know if you've watched beautiful day in the neighborhood that just came out that's not my favorite film of all time but it's a really good like new tom hanks film that came out that uh, it was definitely worth a watch i think it's just actually come on netflix so i'd, I'd give that a watch but actually for a, lot, for a long time it was um it was 28 days later i don't know if you remember that like, thriller um yep. that danny boyle did yep. um and because of that film sort of danny boyle became my favorite director um i just think i just think it was such an interesting and different take on on an end of the world situation that it felt grounded in reality in some weird way um so i remember for a long time that was i'd probably class that as my favorite film although i haven't watched it in probably 10 years I suppose it's quite relevant now, given it's, a, as you say, it's a contagion, not not quite so virulent or probably more virulent than this one, but yeah, but but, but fascinating. Yeah, I, that's, uh, now I watched, I was watching, uh, there was a um, documentary on Tom Hanks just a few days ago, which I, I found fascinating. Um, so, um, as he's, he's known as being the, the nicest guy in Hollywood, I think, which is, which is a nice, uh, nice badge to have, I would think. Yeah, yeah, he's a, uh, a legend. No, well, thank you for that. So, a couple of sort of final questions is is, and I'm interested in this, especially from from your back, given your background, is what would you say to anyone that was thinking of going into business right now? I think if you're going into business right now, uh, me personally, I think it seems like the best time to do it. Do you know, like it feels like the tools of a business have been made so much simpler and easier to access. Um, I don't know if that's just because I'm a little bit older and a bit wiser looking back on it and I know the path now. Um, but I just feel like, you know, if you want to make a website, it's super easy to make a website. You know, if you want to make yep. do your accounting online, it's yep. super easy to do your accounting online. Joe, you, know, you want to do your marketing, you know, it's easy to start a Facebook and Instagram um page joe like i feel like the routes to market and when i talked about platform before i feel like we're going through this crazy platform revolution joe like, in every sector in every market does it's, it's it's making it super accessible for everyone um and i think it's just get stuck in and and get doing it like i, I i've seen like a so many different businesses even start like when when we've been doing it from like the innovation where it's like that is just an incredible idea to just like they've just rebranded or repurposed an existing idea and sold it to a new demographic and market i think 
now that we're going through this like big millennial shift becoming the the main economic drivers within the economy do you like actually there's a there's there's this big tectonic shift plate of like how things are advertised and communicated to you know and and what we're seeing joe definitely with our business is we're getting these legacy legacy brands that we would all distinguish as these big brands being like how do we communicate in this new world and then you look down to this new world and they're just communicating like that as if it's the norm do you know like i think <laughs> what, what seems like the norm for these people that are going to be starting business like joe doesn't seem like the norm for these these big legacy brands that have, have got this huge like asset or infrastructure built around the way that they used to do the do business um so much is changing so quickly isn't it? it's the it's i i, I heard um the tony ben lord ben who's no longer with us I, I know when he retired from from politics he used to um he used to present in in universities and things he used to lecture a bit and um he always would say um apparently he'd always start his his, his lecture with we all wake up every day knowing less than we did the day before and and of course there was great consternation with all the, the lecturers given it was the houses of, you know houses of, of education and he just spent the, the information the way you know everything the information is growing so fast that our percentage of it that we know is going to reduce over time it, 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 however hard we learn and mm-hmm. I, I think it's a great point that there's always a new way and there's always you know quicker quicker ways of doing things and you're right that the platforms now to be able to start a quite a comprehensive business with very few people and very few um assets is 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 very straightforward yeah a hundred percent and and just even the working from home culture do you know like yes you know, we 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 defined ourselves and we still do by being york and london based as, as you said at the start but actually do you know like what does that matter in 2022 when you're starting a business like does does it matter and once you sort of free your mind from thinking like that actually it becomes a completely different ball game yeah uh, so yeah you've almost you've almost removed location from starting a business Joe, like any sort of need for capital because everything's semi-free to, to the point of when you want to go pro then that's when you go pro Joe, like all, all you sort of need is that, that idea and and of course you know a lot of so, you know software based systems are subscription based so we don't have a lot of capital purchases to make so yeah i i, I completely agree that the potential is is so there and and, and basically you you've got we've got more of a pay as you go pay as you grow type um commercial reality which which you know creates reduces massively the barriers to entry to to anyone that wants to do it so um, just a final one then, uh, just, and again, I'd be interested to know your, your, your response. What would you, what would you say uh, if you could go back in time and, and advise an 18 year old you? If I could go back in time and advise an 18 year old me. That is a tough one, isn't it? A real tough one. I think it would be I don't know. Uh, to, to be honest, I'm I've absolutely loved the journey, you know, like what's and all. Um, so it's really, really hard to like <laughs> ever like think back and be like, what would I do differently? I think if I was to do it differently, I would say just do things faster. I think there's there's a lot of deliberating over is this the right thing to do? Is it not the right thing? And I think it's just do it. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. Do you know, like, you know, there's a lot of times where you're like, oh, we should invest in this or we should bring on this team member. And you, know, you build a hundred different scenarios out. You sit down for meeting after meeting being like, is this right? Is this wrong? But actually, I think if you just did it faster without sort of thinking about it, just go with that like gut feeling. I yep. think I think you would learn more along the way than, than all those other hours wasted deliberating it. Yeah. So maybe just do, do things faster. I think that's very yeah i think that could even even account sorry even account to like getting the money you know like i think people sort of see finance as a bit of an option but actually joe you can go to your bank and convince them to lend you that amount of money you know it doesn't have to be done organically if you know that the risk you've you've done the risk analysis in your head and you're you you understand it yeah yeah probably just go faster 
Well, I mean, you know, again, talk about the, the, the modern world, the, the, the changing world if, if, of things like crowdfunding, etc. We don't have, you know, the, the, the people have money and they want to make, you know, a reasonable return on it. And, you know, things like crowdfunding is out there for, for people to go. And I, I've, I'm, you know, I've worked with several businesses that have raised a different amount from lots of different people. Um, mm -hmm. And the platforms are there. It's, um, it's fascinating. Well, I, Kelly, it's been absolutely delightful and, and, and really interesting to get, you know, to, to get your story and your views on, on various things. And I really thank you for your time. And I know um, you had a very, 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 I was going to say late night, but actually very early morning working today. So I really appreciate you uh, you, 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 you participating today. Is, it, is there any last thoughts that you have or any last words you'd have for anyone that's that, that's watching or listening? Um, mm, I think it's just play into your community. Do you know, like I think it's just make sure that you understand what your community is and what you give them and what they give you. And I think if you can just figure that out and just enjoy, enjoy the ride, just be nice to people like that. The, 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 the sort of saying that nice guys finish last, I just, for me, like hasn't, hasn't been applicable in the last 11 years and, and I've enjoyed, enjoyed every sort of second of it. So I think it's just, yeah, lean into, lean into that community because it's, it's better to go with people than go alone for sure. Brilliant. Well, that's, very wise words to, to finish up with. And again, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. Bye-bye.